in the Commonwealth, I would by contraries execute all things. For no kind of traffic would I admit, no name of magistrate, letters should not be known, riches, poverty, and use of service, none. Contract, succession, born, bound of land. Tithe, vineyard, none. No use of metal, corn, or wine, or oil. No occupation. All men idle, all. And women too, but innocent and pure. No sovereignty. Yet he would be king on it. Ah, but latter end of his commonwealth forgets the beginning. All things in common nature should produce without sweat or endeavor. Treason, felony, sword, pike, knife, gun, or need of any engine would I not have. But nature should bring forth of its own kind, all foison, all abundance to feed my innocent people. No marrying among his subjects. None man all idols, whores, and knaves. I would with such perfection govern, sir, to excel the golden age. Say his majesty, long live Gonzalo. And do you mark me, sir? I prithee. I prithee. No more. Thou dost talk nothing to me. I do well believe your highness, and did to it, minister occasion to these gentlemen, who are of such sensible and nimble lungs, that they always used to laugh at nothing. Twas you we laughed at. Who, in this kind of merry fooling, am nothing to you. So you may continue, and laugh at nothing still. What? A blow was that given? <laughs> Why, I was not on the flat home. You are gentlemen of brave metal. You would lift the moon out of her sphere if she would continue in it five weeks without changing. Ah, we would so, and then a bad fouling. Nay, good, my lord, and be not angry. No, I warrant you. I will not adventure my discretion so weakly. Will you laugh me asleep, for I am very heavy. Go sleep, and hear us. What? All so soon asleep. I wish my eyes would, themselves, shut up my thoughts, and I find are inclined to do so. Please, you, sir, do not omit the heavy offer. <laughs> uh, seldom uh, visit sorrow, when it doth it is a comforter. We too, my lord, will guard your person while you take your rest and watch your safety. Oh, thank you. Wondrous heavy. What a strange drowsiness possessed them. Oh, it is the quality of the climate. Why, why does that then make our eyes sink? I find not myself disposed to sleep. Nor I. My spirits are nimble, and they fell together all, as if by consent they dropped, as died by a thunderstroke. What? Oh, what might, worthy Sebastian? Oh, what might? No more, and yet we think we see it in thy face. <laughs> what should be the occasion speaks thee? And my strong imagination sees the crown. Let me just take one of these. Talk to yourself. Interaction. What do you think? I'll do Antonio. Where are you? Oh, what? Art thou waking? Do you hear me speak? Antonio is my line. Oh, is that yours? Okay. I do, and surely, as it is sleeping. And Sebastian is my line. Let him, let him, so you don't you want to do one of them? So you're oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. There's like two or three pages you're talking to yourself. <laughs> I <laughs> can't distinguish either of the things. <laughs> I talk to myself voice. all the time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so where are we? Do your Sebastian. Okay. <laughs> I do, and surely it is sleepy language that thou speakest out of thy sleep. What is it that thou say? This is a strange repose to be... Asleep with eyes wide open, standing, speaking, moving, and yet so fast asleep. No, Sebastian. <laughs> then uh, let us thy fortune sleep. No, rather, thy rather winkest whilst thou art waking. Thou dost snore distinctly. 
is meeting in thy snores. I am so serious that my custom, you must be so too. If heed me, which to do travels the oar. Well, I am standing water. I'll teach you how to flow. Do so, to ebb. Heredity sloth instructs me. Oh, but if you knew how the purpose cherish whilst you thus you mock it, how in stripping it you more invest it. I mean men indeed more often do so near the bottom run than they do in the fear of sloth. Prithee say on, the setting of thine eyes and cheek proclaim the matter from thee, and a birth indeed which throws thee much to yield. Thus, sir, <clears throat> Uh, though this lord of weak remembrance, this shall be a little memory, and when he is earthed, I had to hear, um, almost persuaded, for he is a spirit of persuasion only, and professes to persuade, the king his sons alive, and tis impossible that he is undrowned as he that slept here swim. I have no hope that he's undrowned. <laughs> oh, out of that, no hope with great hope I have you. And no hope that way is another way so high a hope that even ambition cannot pierce a wink beyond but doubt discovery there. Will you grant with me that Ferdinand, Ferdinand is drowned? He's gone. Then tell me, what's the next heir to Naples? Uh, Clarabelle. She that is a queen of Tunis, she that dwells ten leagues from man's life, and she that Naples can have no note unless the sun were post, and the man and the moon too slow, till newborn chins uh, be rough and reasonable. That she that from uh, we all see swallowed, all the uh, some cast again, and for the destiny to perform an act whereof the, uh, what's past is prologue, and what to come is yours in my discharge. What stuff is this? How say you? Tis true, my brother's daughter's queen of Tunis. So is she heir of Naples? Twixt the regions, there is some space. A space where no cubit seems to cry out. How shall that Clarabelle measure its us back to Naples? Uh, keep in Tunis and let Sebastian wake. Ah, uh, say this for death, that thou seize them. Why, they were no worse than they are now. And there, uh, there be that cruel Naples as well as he that sleeps. Lord that can pray and prate and amply and unnecessarily as this consolo. I have self could make I myself could make a chaff of the king deep chat. Oh that you bore the mind that I do. What a sleep were this and your advancement. Do you understand me? Uh, Methinks I do. And then, uh, and how does your content tender your own good fortune? I remember you did supplant your brother Prospero. Ah, true. Uh, and look how well my garments sit upon me. Such much feature, uh, much feature than before. My brother's servants were then my fellows, and now they are my men. But for your conscience. Aye, sir, where lies that? And if twere a kind, I twould be to put my slipper, uh, but I feel not the dairy in my bosom. Twenty consciousness they stand between me and the malign, and uh, candied they be, and melted, and they molest, and there lies your brother. No more, no better than the earth he lies upon, and if he were now, he's like that's dead, uh, whom he that to be obedient steel, the three inches of it, can lie, can lay to bed forever. But whilst you do it, doing not 
doing thus to the perpetual wink for an eye, and we should have cut all this, and put on the ancient <laughs> morsel, this uh, Sir Prudence, who could not abrade our course. But for all the rest, let's take congestions, suggestions as a cat laps milk, and they'll the clock and the business that we befits the hour. Thy case, dear friend, shall be my precedent. As thou goest, Milan, I come by Naples. Draw thy sword. One stroke shall free thee from the tribute which thou payest, and I'll and I, the king, shall love thee. Draw together. And when I hear my hand, do you the like to call on Gonzalo? Oh, but one word. My master through his art foresees the danger that you, his friend, are in and sends me forth, for else his project dies to keep them living. While you are here to snoring lie, open conspiracy, his time doth take if life you keep a care, shake off slumber and beware. Awake, awake. <laughs> and don't you up then? Let us both be sudden. Now, good angels, preserve the king. Why? How now? Ho, oh, awake! Why are you drawn, therefore, this ghastly looking? What's the matter? Whilst we stood here, securing your repose, even now we heard a hollow burst of bellowing like bulls, or rather lions. This do not awake you. It struck mine ear most terribly. I heard nothing. Nothing? Ah. "'Twas a din to fright a monster's ear, and make an earthquake. Sure it was the roar of a whole herd of lions." "'Heard you this, Gonzalo?' "'Upon my honor, sir, I heard a humming, and that a strange one, too, which did awake me. I shaked you, sir, and cried as my eyes opened. I saw their weapons drawn. There was a noise, that's verity. Tis best we stand upon our guard.' Or that they quit this place. Let's draw our, our weapons. Lead us, lead off this ground. Let's make further search for my poor son. Heavens keep him from these beasts, for he is sure in the island. Lead away. Prospero, my lord, shall know what I have done. So, king, go safely on to seek thy son. <laughs> All the infections that the sun sucks up from bogs, fence, flats, and prosper fall and make him by inch meal a disease. His spirits hear me, and yet I needs must curse. But they'll nar pinch, fright me with urchin shows, pinch me in the mire, no, leave me like a firebrand in the dark out of my way, unless he bids them. But for every trifle they are set upon me, sometime like apes that mow and chatter at me, and after bite me, then like hedgehogs which lie tumbling at my barefoot way and mount their pricks at my footfall, sometimes am I all wound with adders who with golden tongues do hiss me into madness. No, now lo, here comes a spirit of his, and to torment me for bringing wood in slowly, I'll fall flat, perchance he will not find me. Yon thing, black cloud. Yon huge one looks like a foul. The bar that looks in the glitter 
if it were not thunder as it did before, I know not where to hide my head. Gone the same cloud cannot choose to fall the cloud. <laughs> Oh my Poor fish. Dead. Fish. Yeah, he smells like a fish. <laughs> fish like smell. A kind of mm, not of the newest which on is a changed fish. Were I in England right now, <laughs> as once I was, and had this fish painted, were a holly foot, holiday, holly in, uh, holiday pool, uh, where would be a piece of silver. Yeah, this, there would be this monster be a man. Any stranger who beast there makes a man. <clears throat> when they, they will not give a doit for to relieve a lame beggar, they would lay out ten to see a dead Indian. <laughs> oh, like black man that spins like arms. Oh, arms. Oh. But an islander uh, that had uh, lately suffered by a thunderbolt. Storm has come again. My best way is to creep under the scabardine, and uh, tis no other shelter thereabout. Misery acquaints a man with strange bedfellows. I can look through the shroud, all the dregs of the storm be past. Here shall no more to see, to see. Uh, here shall I die, sure. This is a very scurvy tune to sing at a man's funeral. Well, here's to my comfort. Hmm. I'll sing this part now. <laughs> the master, the swabbler, the boatsman, and I, the gunner and his mate, loved. Maul, Meg, and Marion, and Marjorie, but none of us cared for Kate. For she had a tongue with a tang that would cry to a sailor, Go hang! She loved not the savor, nor tar, or a pitch, yet a tailor might scratch her where she did itch. And to see boys let her go hang. This is a scurvy tune, too, but uh, here's my comfort. Uh, do not torment me all. Oh. What's the matter? Do we devils here? Do you put <laughs> tricks upon us? Oh, God. With savages and men of Indy, huh? I have not escaped drowning to be feared now of your four legs. For it has been said, a proper man has ever want on four legs. So cannot make him give round. And it shall be said so again. Well, Stefano breathes that nostril. <laughs> oh, the spirits torment me. Oh, this is one some two. monster. Oh, oh, I thought I might take one of them because it's the next three pages. <laughs> okay, be drunk now when you do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, this is the monster of Iowa with four legs. Who hath God as I taken an egg? Where the devil should he learn our language? I will give him some relief. If it be but for that, if I can recover him and keep him tame and get to Naples with him, he's a present for any emperor that ever trod on each leather. Do <laughs> not torment me, pretty. I'll bring my wood home faster. He's in his fit now and does not talk after the wives. He shall taste of my bottle. If he have never drunk wine before, it will go near to remove his fit. If I can recover him and keep him tame, I will not take much. It will not take much for him. He shall pay for him that hath him, and that soundly. Thou dost be yet but little hurt. Thou wilt anon. I I know it by my trembling. 
Now prosper works upon thee. Come, on your ways, open your mouth. Here is that which will give language to you, cat. Open your mouth, for it will shake your shaking to tell you and that soundly. You cannot tell who's your friend. Open your chaps again. I should know that voice. <laughs> it should be. But all these are devil's eyes. Four legs and two voices, the most delicate monster. His forward voice now is to speak well of his friend. His backward voice is to utter foul speeches and to detract. If all the wine in my bottle would recover him, I will help his egg. Come, I'm in. I will pour some in thy other mouth. Stefano! Doth thy other mouth call me? Mercy, mercy, this is the devil and no monster. I'll leave him. I have no long spoon. Ah, oh, Stefano, if thou be a Stefano, touch me and speak to me, for I am Trinculo. Oh, you need not afraid, my dear friend Trinculo. If thou beest Trinculo, come forth. I'll pull thee by the lesser leg. If any be Trinculo's legs, these are they. <laughs> thou art very Trinculo indeed. How camest thou to be the siege of this moon calf? Can he vent Trinculo's? I took him to be killed with a thunderstroke. Then, but art thou not drowned, Stefano? I <laughs> hope. Oh. Uh, now thou art not drowned, is the storm o'erblown? I did not under the dead moon cast cavern, for fear of the storm. And art thou living, Stefano? Oh, Stefano, truly a poison escaped. <laughs> really, do not turn me about, my stomach is not constant. These are but fine things, and if they be not sprites. That's a brave god in bare celestial liquor. I will kneel to him. How didst thou escape? How camest thou hither? Swear by this bottle how thou camest hither. I escaped upon a foot of sack, which the sailors heaved overboard by this bottle, which I made of the bark of a tree with mine own hands since I was cast ashore. I'll swear upon that bottle to be thy true subject, for the liquor is not Earthly. Here. Where then how thou escapes? Swim ashore, man, like a duck. <laughs> I can swim like a duck, I'll be sworn. Here, get the book. <laughs> oh, sir, thou canst swim like a duck, thou art made like a goose. Oh, Stephano, has there any more of this? The whole butt, man. Oh. My cellar is in a rock by the seaside. Oh. Where my wine is hid. Now, now, moon calf. How does thine egg? Uh, hast thou not dropped from heaven? Out of the moon, I do assure thee. I was a man of the moon when time was. I have seen thee in her. I do adore thee. My mistress showed me thee and thy dog and thy bush. Come, swear to that. Kiss the book. <clears throat> I will furnish it anon with new contents. Where? By this good light, this is a very shallow monster. I have feared of him. Uh, a very weak monster. The man in the moon, uh, <laughs> a most poor, incredulous, a, mo a most poor, credulous monster. In good sooth. I'll show thee every fertile inch of the island, and I will kiss thy foot. I pretty be my god. Why it is like a most perfidious and drunkenest monster. When God's asleep, he'll rob thee bottle. I'll kiss thy foot. I'll swear myself thy subject. Come on then. Down and swear. <laughs> I shall laugh myself to death at this. Oh, oh he did it, monster. Oh, oh scurvy monster. I could kill I could think in my heart to beat him. Come, kiss. I had the poor monsters in trick. An abominable monster. I'll show these the best strings. I'll pluck thee berries. I'll fish for thee. I'll get thee rude enough. A plague upon the tyrant that I serve. I'll bear him no more sticks. But follow thee, thou 
wonders, man. A wonder of a more a poor drunker. I pretty let me bring thee where crabs grow, and I with my long nails would dig thee big nuts. Show thee the jay's nest, and struck thee how to snare the nimble marmoset. I'll bring thee to clustering thriller bilberts, and sometimes I'll get thee young scammels from the rock. Wilt thou go with me? Really now lead the way without any more talking. Trinkolo, <laughs> the king and all our company else be drowned. We will inherit here. Here, bear my bottle. Hello, Trinkolo, we'll fill it by and by again. Farewell, master. Farewell. Farewell. <laughs> no more damsel, big uh, or fish, or fetch. In firing at requiring, nor scrape, trenching, no wash dish, ban, 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 <laughs> has our new master, get our new man, freedom, I day, I day, freedom, freedom, I day, freedom, oh, brave monster. Lead the way. <laughs> okay. You're taking a break or are we going? Take a break. Take a break. Take a break. <laughs> yeah. uh, 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 uh. That was so good. <laughs> I'm not going on. So many things huh? yeah, So like much to on. think about. Not only, not only <laughs> monsters, but drunken monsters. We know the bird man wants to get along with Miranda. We know that everybody wants to kill and uh, that Caliban wants to rule the world. So, from that point on, let's do scene three. Thank you. You also should just sit. Oh, excuse me. I'll do deck three, scene three. Enter Alonso, Sebastian, Antonio, Gonzalo, Adrian, Francisco, and etc. <laughs> I love that. And, and etc. Fire and like I can no, go no further, sir. My old bones aches. Here's a maze trod indeed through fortrights and meanders by your patience. I needs must rest me. Oh Lord, I cannot blame thee. Who am myself attached with weariness to the dulling of my spirits? Sit down and rest. Even here I will put off my hope and keep it no longer for my flatterer. He is drowned, whom thus we stray to find, and the sea mocks our frustrate search on land. Well, let him go. I am right glad that he's out of the hope, and do not the one repulse for guard the purpose that you resolved to effect. Uh, the next yes. advantage will be to take thoroughly. <laughs> For now they are oppressed with travail, whoever he was, and they will not nor cannot uh, use such vigilance as they are fresh. I say tonight, no more. No more. What harmony is this, my good friends? Hark! Marvelous, sweet music. Give us kind keepers, heavens. What were these? A living dollary. Now I believe that our unicorns that are in Arabia, there is one tree, one phoenix throne, one phoenix at this hour reigning there. I don't believe you both. And uh, what does then else want credit? Come to me, and I'll be sworn tis true. Tra travelers, there did lie. Though fools at home condemn them. If in Naples I should report this now. Would they believe me? If I should say I saw such islands, for since these are people of the island, who though they are of monstrous shape, yet note, their manners are more gentle, kind, than of our humane generation, we shall find many, nay, almost any. Honest Lord, thou hast said well, for some of you they are present of worse than devil. I cannot too much moose use. Such shapes, such gestures, such sound expressing 
although they want the use of tongue, a kind of excellent dumb discourse is worse. Praise and depart. They vanish strangely. No matter since they have left their vineyard beans behind. We have stomachs. Don't please you taste of what is here? Not, not I. Faith, not sir, I. you need not fear. When we were boys, we would believe that there were mountaineers, dewlap like bulls, whose throats had hanging at them wallets of flesh, or that there were such men whose heads stood in their breasts, which now we find each putter out of five for one will bring us good warrant of. I will stand to and feed, although my last no matter, since I feel the best is past. Brother, my lord the duke, stand to as, as do, as, and do as we. You are two men of oh. sin, and ah. destiny, and have to instrument this new no. world. And what is in it? The never no. serpentine sea had caused to belch you up. On this island, where men doth not inhabit, you amongst men, being most unfit to live, I have made you mad. Even with such like valor, men hang and drown their proper selves. Even you fools, I and my fellows are ministers of fate. The elements of whom your swords are tempered may as well wound the loud winds, or with be smocked at staffs. Kill the still closing waters, as diminish our one dowel that's in my plum. My fellow ministers are like invulnerable. If you could hurt, your swords are now too massy for your strengths, and will not be inflicted. But remember, for that's my business to you, that you three from Malay did supplant good prosper, exposed unto the sea, which hath requited him and his innocent child, for which foul deed the powers delaying not forgetting, have incensed the seas and shores, yea, all the creatures against your peace. <laughs> Be of thy son, Alonso, they have bereft, and do pronounce by me lingering perdition. Worse than any death can be at once, shall step by step attend you and your ways, whose wraths to guard you from here in this most desolate isle else falls upon your heads. There's nothing but heart's sorrow and the clear light ensuing. Bravely, the figure of this harpy hast thou performed, my Ariel. <laughs> the grace it had devouring, but my instruction hast thou nothing baited in what thou hadst to say, so with good life and observation strange, my meaner ministers and their several kind they have done. My high charms work. These my enemies are all knit up in their distractions. <laughs> they now are in my power, and in these fits I leave them, while I visit young Ferdinand, whom they suppose is drowned, and his and mine loved Tane. In the name of something holy, sir, why stand you in this strange stare? Oh, it is monstrous, monstrous! Methought the billows spoke, it told me of it. The winds that sink, the air. Oh, mute. Methought the billows spoke, and told me of it. The winds did sing it to me, and the thunder, the deep, the gentle organ pipe, pronounced the name of Prosper. It did pass, and my trespass. Therefore, my son in the ooze is bedded, and I'll seek him deeper than air plummeted sounded, and with him there be my mother. That one feeling at a time, I'll find their way to Sorry. I'll be thy second. All three of them are desperate. They're with him like poison given to work a great time after. Now, just I 
What did you guys say? Oh, I agree. They're gonna go. I don't know. They're gonna go. Oh to my God. God. Where are we? Are you able to play it to Act Four? Act Four, Scene One. Are you gonna play Act Here we Four, go. Scene Four? Okay, Act Four, Scene One. So we can go get more food. <laughs> go get more food. <laughs> <laughs> the reasonable shore, now lie foul and muddy, not one of them that yet looks on me or would know me, Ariel, fetch me the hat and rapier in my cell, I will discase me in myself present as I was sometime Milan. Quickly, spirit, thou shalt ere long be free. Where the bee sucks, there suck I, in the cowslip's bell I lie. There I couch when owls do cry, on the bat's back I do fly. After summer merrily, merrily, merrily shall I live now, under the blossom that hangs on the bough. Oh, that's my dainty Ariel, I shall miss thee, but yet thou shalt have freedom, so, so, so. To the king's ship, invisible as thou art, there shalt thou find the mariners asleep under the hatches, the master and boats bosun being awake, and force them to this place. And presently, I pray thee. I drink the air before me, and return, or ere your pulse twice beat. All torment, trouble, wonder, and amazement inhabits here. Some heavenly power guide us out of this fearful country. Behold, Sir King, the wronged Duke of Milan, Prospero. For more assurance that a living prince does now speak to thee, I embrace thy body, and to thee and thy company I bid a hearty welcome. Where thou bist he or no, or some enchanted trifle to abuse me, as late as I have been, I not know. My pulse beats as of flesh and blood, and since I saw thee, deflection of my mind amends, with which I fear a madness held me. This must crave, as if this be at all a most strange story. I do to my due, I resign. I do entreat thou pardon me my wrongs, and how should Prospero be living and be here? First, noble friend, let me embrace thine age, whose honor cannot be measured or confined. Whether this be or be not, I'll not swear. Yet do not yet taste some subtleties in the isle that will nor let you believe certain things. Welcome, my friends all, but you, my place of lords, were I so minded, I here could pluck his highness frown upon you and justify you traitors. At this time, I will tell no tale. The devil speaks in him. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> no, for you, most wicked sir, whom to call brother, would even infect my mouth. I do forgive thy rankest fault, all of them, and require my dukedom of thee, which perforce I know thou must restore. If thou beest prospero, give us particulars of thy preservation. How thou hast met us here, whom three hours since were wrecked upon the shore, where I have lost. Uh, how sharp the point of this remembrance is, my dear son, Ferdinand. I am woe for it, sir. Irreparable is the loss, and patience says it is past her cure. I rather think you have not sought her help, of whose soft grace for the like loss I have her sovereign. Uh, I have her sovereign aid, and rest myself content. You the like loss? As great to me as late, and supportable to make the dear loss I have, and the dear loss have I means much weaker than you may call to comfort you, for I have lost my daughter. A daughter? Oh heavens, they were living both in Naples, the king and queen there. That they were, I wish myself, were mudded in that oozy bed where my son lies. When did you lose your daughter? In this last tempest, I perceive these lords at this encounter do so much admire that they devour their reason and scarce think their eyes do offices of truth. Their words are natural breath. 
But howsoever you have been jostled from your senses, know for certain that I am Prospero, and that very duke which was thrust forth of Milan, who most strangely upon this shore where you are racked was landed to be the lord on it. No more yet of this, for it is a chronicle of day by day, not a relation for a breakfast, nor befitting this first meeting. Welcome, sir. The cell's my court. Here have I few attendants and subjects none abroad. Pray you look in. My dukedom, since you have given me again, I will requite you with as a good thing. At least bring forth a wonder to content ye as much as me, my dukedom. Oh! Oh! Mm -hmm. Remember. Sweet lord, you play me false. My dearest love, I would not for the world. Yes, for a score of kingdoms you should wrangle, and I would call it fair play. If this prove a vision of the island, one dear son, shall I twice lose? A most high miracle. To see these threaten, they are merciful. I have cursed them without cause. Now all the blessings of a glad father compass of thee about. Arise and say how thou camest here. Oh wonder, how many goodly creatures are there here? How beauteous mankind is! Oh brave new world that has such people in it! It is new to thee. What is this my maid with whom thou wast at play? <laughs> Your else acquaintance cannot be three hours. Is she the goddess that hath severed us and brought us thus together? Sir, she is mortal. But by an immortal providence, she's mine. I chose her when I could not ask my father for his advice. <laughs> Not thought I had one. She is daughter to this famous Duke of Milan, and of whom so often I have heard renown, but never saw before, of whom I have received a second wife and second father. This lady makes him to me. I am hers, oh. but. Oh, how oddly it will sound that I must ask my child's forgiveness. Yes, sir, stop. Let us not burden our remembrances with that heaviness that's gone. I have inly wept, for should I have spoke ere this? Look down, you gods, and on this couple drop a blessed crown, for it is you that have chalked way forth the way which brought us hither. I say amen, Gonzalo. Was Milane thrust from Milane that his issue should become kings of Naples? Oh, rejoice beyond a common joy, and set it down with gold on lasting pillars in one voyage. Did Clarabelle her husband find at Tunis, and Ferdinand her brother found a wife where he himself was lost? Prospero, his dukedom, is in a poor isle, and all of us ourselves when no man was his own. Give me your hands. Let grief and sorrow still embrace his heart that doth not wish you joy. Be it so. Amen. Oh, look, sir. Look, sir. Here is more of us. I prophesied if a gallows were on land, this fellow could not drown. Now blasphemy that swears grace or board, not an oath on shore. Hast thou no mouth by land? What is the news? The news is that we have safely found our king in company, the next ship. But by the three glasses, since we gave out split, is tight in the air and bravely rigged. So when we first put out to sea, wow, Sir. funny. <laughs> uh, hell of a boat All sweet. this service have I done since yes, I went. My tricksy spirits. These are not natural events. They strengthen from strange to stranger. <laughs> Say, how came you hither? If I didn't think so, I would well awake. I'll strive to tell you. <laughs> we were dead of sleep 
And now we know not. All clapped together under hatches. But where ye but even now with strange and several bruises. Noises. Noises they were. And a roaring, shrieking, howling, giggling, <laughs> gingling chains, and no diversity of sounds, horrible. And we were awake straightway at liberty, where we, in all our trim, freshly beheld our royal good and gallant ship near master tapering to higher in a trice was holding you and even in a dream were we divided from them and were brought smoking together was it well done bravely my diligence thou shalt be free this is as strange a maze as e'er men trod and there is this, in this business more than nature was ever conducted of. Some oracle must rectify our knowledge. Sir, my liege, do not infest your mind with beating on the strangeness of this business. At picked leisure, which shall be shortly single, I'll resolve you, which to you shall seem probable, of every of these ac happened accidents. Till when, be cheerful, and think of each thing well. Come hither, spirit. Set Caliban and his companions free. Untie the spell. How fares my gracious sir? There are yet missing of your company some few odd lads that you remember not. Oh, every man shift for all the rest, and let no man take care for himself, for all is but one but fortune. Coraggio, bully monster, coraggio. Oh. If these be true spies, which I wear in my head, there's a goodly sight. Oh, step out, step out to both the then. <laughs> these be brave spirits indeed. How fine my master is. I am afraid he would chastise me. <laughs> what things are these, my lord Antonio? Will money buy them? Very like one of them is a plain fish, <laughs> and no doubt marketable. Mark but the badges of these men, my lords. Then say if they be true. This misshapen knave, his mother was a witch, and one so strong that could control the moon, make flows and ebbs, and deal in her command without her power. These three have robbed me, and this demi devil, for he's a bastard one, has plotted with them to take my life. Two of these fellows you must know and own. This thing of darkness I acknowledge mine. I shall be pinched to death. It is not, Stefano, my drunken butler. Oh, he is drunk now. <laughs> Where had he wine? And Chinkulo is reeling right. Where should they find this grand liquor that hath gilded them? How camest thou into this pickle? I have been in such a pickle, such as I saw it last, and I fear me it will never out of my bones. I shall not fear fly. Bowie, what a stuff. Oh, touch me not, I am not Stefano, but a cramp. You'd be king of the isle, sirrah. I should have been a snore one then. A sore one yeah. then. This is a strange thing as e'er I looked on. He is as disproportioned in his manners as in his shape. Go, sir, at my cell. Take with you your companions. As you look to have my pardon, trim it handsomely. Aye, that I will. I'll be wise hereafter, and seek for grace. What a thrice double ass I, was I to take this drunkard for a god and worship this dull fool. Go to! Away! Hence, and bestow your luggage where you found it. Or stole it, rather. Sir, I invite your highness and your train to my poor cell, where you shall take your rest. 
for this one night, which part of it I'll waste with such discourse as, I doubt not, shall make it go quick away. The story of my life and the particular accidents gone by since I came to this isle. And in the morn, I'll bring you to your ship and so to Naples, where I have hoped to see the nuptial of these, our dear beloved, solemnized. And thence retire me to my Milan, where every third thought shall be my grave. I long to hear the story of your life, which must take the ear strangely. I'll deliver all and promise you calm seas, auspicious gales, and sail so expeditious that shall catch your royal fleet far off. My Ariel, chick, that is my charge. Then to the elements be free. Fare you well. Please you. Talking to Ariel there? Please, you join here or the fifth? <laughs> okay, epilogue. <laughs> epilogue is an epilogue. Long, long, long. Spoken by Prospero. Oh, oh right. Oh, yeah, and then Prospero. Now, now my charms are all overthrown by what strength I have mine own, which is most faint now, it is true. I must be here confined by you or sent to Naples. Let me not, since I have my dukedom got and Pardon the deceiver, dwell in this bare island by your spell. But release me from my bands with the help of your good hands. Gentle breath of yours my sails must fill, or else my project fails. Which was to please. Now I want spirits to enforce, art to enchant, and my ending is despair. Unless I be relieved by prayer, which pierces so that it assaults mercy itself and frees all faults. Oh. Oh. Nice. Oh, wait. Yeah. As <laughs> you from crime would pardon me, <laughs> let your indulgence <laughs> set, set me free. free. Uh, <laughs> That one moment that of says, I would if I could. Oh,